You may remember in a previous video I mentioned sunk cost fallacy. I totally ignored that on this one because this was going to be really, really simple. And then, well, that's not quite working. So we're going to go one. No, that it's, this was. Yeah, I, I ignored me. Uh, so here's the switch puzzle. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of wires. That's a that's a very colorful rainbow rat's nest. If that got entirely too complicated, um, and why you ask? Because it's in space, and things in space have to light up. Um, well, people have to see them light up, otherwise they don't know that the switches did exactly. anything. Exactly. See, the engineer who works on it, that he would know what happened. Those of you who have played escape games have probably seen some puzzle where. You have a, a bay or a, a, a bank of toggle switches, and you've got to get the right one up, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, BA. What is it again? Up, up, down, down, left, it's right. Up, up. Is it up, down, up, down, or is it up, 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 down, it's up, down, up, down, left, down, right. down, left, no, right, left, right, up, BA. Right, up, right. We did work for the video game museum, so uh, we should know that and don't. I'm sorry, Joe. Sorry. You've seen these switch puzzles. Uh, just a switch not having to light up, really, really simple, because you just have a, a whole bunch of these in series where one is feeding into the next. They only have two pins each. Pin there, pin there, and here's your switch. And then there's another one over here. Um, and these are wired together in a different color. Um, and you, you close the switches and when they're all closed your, your signal goes. And if you want to make it an off where it's a down, you just physically flip the switch over and that's all there is to it. But we couldn't do that because in space, things have to light up. So each one of these switches lights up. And that was a much bigger pain than it should have been. Also, the, the uh, looking at these switches, uh, when I was grabbing them, I kind of thought they were going to light up better just on their own. We thought that the actual toggle switch part was actually going to be the part that lights up. And so it's nice and bright and vibrant. And it's like, hey, it did something. And in a dark room, you'd see it. But Barely. competing with not a dark room, you didn't really see it. So I just kind of ran another path on, uh, oh, there's a pointing rod. This smells like your boot, doesn't it? It's because it stays in my boot. Um, so I always cut some slots in there that let the light actually shine on through. So the first problem we ran into um, is, it would have been really easy if we could have found a switch that lit up that had a, a normal open and a normal closed. They're probably out there somewhere, but I couldn't find them for less than 10 bucks a piece and readily available, not on a slow boat from China. So if you had one with uh, theoretical five pins, where you had one in uh, for the, uh, a voltage in for the light and a ground for the light, and then you had a common and a normal open, normal closed, um, that would have been great. And this would have been much, much simpler. But they didn't have them where we go to buy our parts. So your pretty standard thing with any kind of light up switch you're going to find is you have a voltage in, a ground for the light, and then the accessory pin. And um, we put this together and we tried it and everything worked fine. And I got, got them all in there, got them all wired up, uh, and they all lit up. And then I started wiring up all the solution stuff in the back where you're going to have a couple of relays, uh, two relays, uh, each one parallel, so that you had to have all of the correct lights uh, switches on in order to open up its relay and then have all of the incorrect switches off in order to keep its relay in the proper position. There's a um, diagram. There's a diagram. I, I probably ate it because I was frustrated. Horribly, horribly frustrated. <laughs> uh, if you look under all of this mess, uh, you see I have the black wires and the red wires. And those are the ones that are powering, or I thought, were just powering the, uh, the, the lights um, and all of that. And I'll, we'll get there in a minute. Uh, but as soon as we wired up all this stuff in parallel, which is either the purple or the yellows for the corrects and the incorrects, um, we noticed that putting it back together, all of a sudden, uh, if you had any one of the, the non-wireds uh, engaged, nothing would turn on. And that was a complete mystery. Also, as a side note, um, I had to make a note here because 
when I was wiring these, I, I switched the black and the red. So uh, right now, black is power and red is ground. Fortunately, electrons don't actually care about the color of the insulation of the wire they're running through. What we had to do, kind of step number next, was break one of these guys apart. And figure out how it and works. And figure out how it works. So. More specifically, why it wasn't working the way we wanted it to. So if we look here, these pins, this is your 12 volts in, this is your accessory, which is whatever the switch is gonna do, that would be on that side of it, and this is a ground for the light. Now, the way this works is you've got this little, um, this little copper guy here, and the middle pin inside here is the tallest one. So as you move the switch back and forth, you're actually just rocking this guy on this, this pin as a fulcrum and rocking him around so that when he's off, your 12 volts coming in doesn't go anywhere. And then when you're on, your 12 volts coming in goes through your, your, your little plate here and then down out through your accessory. And the, uh, the LED here is... It's actually not an LED, it's an incandescent. Yes, uh, this guy's incandescent, but the light, I'm just so used to LEDs, um, is actually kind of bridging, this will be, I'll try LED symbol anyway, um, bridging these two so that when you're on, you have juice running through here, through this pin, and also through this pin, uh, which is now in, uh, energized, out to ground, and the light turns on. The problem was, and Preston figured this one out, so I'll let him take it. So the problem is, if you just have a single switch, this setup will work fine. You'll have most of your power coming in and going straight out. But when you start lining these up in parallel, when you start lining these switches up, in parallel and in series the way we have these what you run into is that you have one accessory going out feeding into another switch that is currently off where it's reading as a ground so you end up not lighting up your switch your power goes to the path of least resistance biggest thing there so it is less resistance for it to go to the next ground rather than go through an, a light bulb into its own ground and so we couldn't figure that out until we broke down one of these switches and realized we're going to have to change a couple of things. So now we realize that we're going to need a relay for every single switch so that these switches are no longer in parallel with each other. They all communicate with their own relay that is either than in series for the correct ones. Uh, you have to have all of those on and the relays engaged to get your signal through all, uh, I'm not going to tell you how many of those. And for all the ones that don't work, just so you can't just turn on all the switches and now you've you figured it out, if you have any incorrect switch on, it won't work. So with all of that, we found out that we're going to have to use an individual relay for each one of the switches that we have coming off of this thing. So we went to our friendly neighborhood electronic parts store and we went to look for relays. Now, this green relay right here, that's our standard 12 volt relay. It's got a common coming in, your energizing circuit, then you've got a normally closed and a normally open. That's pretty standard, and that's what we thought was the standard variety of relay. So when we went there, we especially found- Especially with five pins. Yes, especially with, especially with five pins. So when we went there and we found this tiny little 12 volt relay, we discovered that it fits very nicely into your standard proto board, which our little green friend here does not. It's always a pain getting this into the you proto board. So try legs around, cram them in there, you barely got enough to solder on the back, but this guy is spaced at that nice 0.1 inch. So when we found a five pin relay that fits nicely into a proto board, we figured it was a no brainer. We just assumed you know what happens there. <laughs> we just assumed that you had your common, your energizing circuit, and normally close and normally open, which is what we were looking for. Turns out, and this was after trial and error, mind you, after we soldered up a bunch of stuff, turns out this guy actually has a common, an energizing circuit, and two normally opens. Oh, also, uh, online, uh, the only spec sheet you can find is in <laughs> German. Uh. <laughs> useless, useless. <laughs> So there was a lot Germans? of- Germans? Yes. That's kind of racist. So there was a lot of trial and error with this thing. What we ended up having to do is we had to make a bank of relays specifically for all of our ons and our, our parallel switches. Then we had to make another bank of relays for all of our series switches. 
And then we had to have this second, this little lone relay over here. And what this guy does is since we only have a normally open on all of these small relays, we needed something that provided a normally close. So we had one of our, one of our circuits go into our relay here just so we could have then a normally closed circuit. And then now we've got a line coming from here. We have a line coming from here. Those lines jumble into these lines. <laughs> Those lines kind of marry up to these lines. And it works. It works. Surprisingly enough, we got it to work, and it does everything that we want it to do. Matt nearly threw it out the door. A couple of times. A couple of times. I convinced him not to. But with this and that, the uh. whole thing, it finally, finally works. And it lights up because... We're gonna go to space, and in space things light up. This is this is what my childhood has told me, watching lots of Star Trek and and the like. So the big thing to really take away from this video is if you go to a store and you find a five pin relay, know that there are different types of relays. You've got your relays with Ask them if they have spec sheets in any language you can read. Lesson number two. When you buy a switch, don't assume you know how it works. Because <laughs> uh, we did, and it didn't work out for us. As it turns out, um, most light-up switches, especially the 12-volt light-up switch, do work this way. So if you want to use one of these light-up switches, you can't put them in series, because then, well, the lights won't work, because now you're doing... Unless you do exactly what we did. Uh, on this one, the switches aren't in series, the relays are. So these switches can't go in series, they also can't go in parallel. They have to... Each switch has to be doing its own thing, which is why it's doing its own thing to a relay that is then in parallel or series with the rest of the rat's nest. And so the third and final thing that we kind of figured out with this, and this has kind of been a problem we've been having with some of our other projects as well, is when you're doing electronics work, you're going to find your parts store that has really nice really nice and shiny proto boards Ooh, and then you're going to find kind of the crummier ones and we found that for some reason it's still copper and and metal and whatnot on this board but the connections are just oh, are just funny these particular ones you have hydrophobic services now you like the stuff that water beads on these guys are like that with solder which which is bad for a proto board because uh the solder just seems to just bead off and want to go anywhere but on the damn proto board. So, <laughs> so really all we have to do now is mount this up in the display that it's going to be well displayed in at the place. Display? Yeah. Like, 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 like an art gallery? That's what we do. We make displays. Lots and lots of displays. Think about it. Any questions about the ranch to which you just subjected yourself, uh, click on the appropriate data field below. I don't know where I am, so I'm not sure where it is. And uh, tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell people you just kind of meh about. But uh, yeah.